Like I covered in another video, AirDrop is an incredible invention, but it has its limitations that it's only for Apple devices. Snapdrop.net is a great way of sharing files between Apple devices, Android phones, Linux computers, and Windows computers. In this video, we will look at creating our own local Snapdrop server so that you are not relying on an internet connection. Snapdrop is conceptually a great tool, but I have found that the site is often not accessible. And then sometimes I want to transfer data between devices that are on a private network and not on the internet. One situation where this was used was when I had a party at my place and everyone was taking pictures and videos. And at the end of the night, people wanted to share those pictures and videos with each other. So when people wanted to share files, they just logged onto the Wi-Fi, pointed their browsers at the local server, and then they could share files with each other. Another situation I find myself in is when I have data from various virtual machines that I want to share data between. And for some reason, I always have problems with getting my VMs to share drives. But if I used a local Snapjob server, then I can easily transfer files between the physical and virtual machines. For this video, I'm gonna be using the Kane 13 distro as my host server in which I'll be running a Docker container for the Snapjob service. To create a virtual machine, I will be using VirtualBox. So first thing I'm gonna do is select a new VM and then fill in the name, which I will call Snap Demo. Then I will select the ISO image for the Kane 13 distro and then hit next. For base memory, I'm gonna up the memory from the default two gig to four gigs or four zero nine six megabytes. For CPUs, I'm gonna select two. And for the virtual hard disk, I will increase it from 25 gigs to 50 gigs. When the setup is all done, I just click finish. And then let's go back to the settings tab and look at what we have. I'm gonna go to the uh, motherboard tab. I'm going to verify that I have 4096 megs of memory. And then over to the processor tab to double check that I have two CPUs selected. And then take a quick look at the display settings. Nothing to change here. And then the storage settings. And finally, the network settings. Here is where I'm going to change the network adapter from uh, NAT to a bridge adapter because I want the VMs to be on the same network as my other devices. And when everything is all good, then I will hit the start button and wait for the VM to boot up. Now that the VM has booted to the Kane ISO, I'm going to double click on the install Kane 22.04 icon. This will start the install to the hard drive. And it's gonna ask me about my install language, which I will leave as English. Gonna continue on and it's gonna ask me about the keyboard layout, which I will also leave as English. For the install type, I'm gonna leave the default of erase disk and then install cane. And pretty much for the rest of this install, I am going to breeze through and just uh, use all the defaults. The system will continue to perform the install and when it's done, I will restart the system. Now it's gonna ask me to remove the installation medium. So I'm gonna to go to the devices menu and then select optical drives, and then choose a disk file, and then I'm gonna select nothing. Then I'll hit the enter to shut down and have the machine reboot. Once the system completely reboots, it will ask for a password. I'm gonna type in the password that I set up and then log in. All right, the system is now ready to go and I'm gonna bring up a terminal window. The first thing I'm gonna do is grab the snap drop code folder from GitHub. So I'm gonna type git clone https colon slash slash github.com slash robin linus slash snap drop dot git. And this should be pretty quick. And when it's done, I should have a new folder named SnapDrop. All right, then I'm gonna install the Docker package by typing snap install docker. And for some odd reason in the middle of this install, my window sizes get kind of screwed up. So I'm just gonna have to resize the VM resolution here. 
And once we are going, I'm going to go ahead and CD into the Snapdrop folder and then do an LS to see what we have. And I see that there are a few folders and then a docker-compose.yml file. I'm going to go ahead and edit this configuration file with VI. And what I want to do here is add the Nginx proxy manager container to it. And then change the ports for the server to 8082 for the unencrypted access. And then 4432 for the HTTPS connection. So I'm going to add a line for app, colon, and then image, colon. I'm going to point that to JC21 slash Nginx dash proxy dash manager, colon latest. And then for the container name, it's going to be Nginx dash proxy dash manager. And the ports to control Nginx will be 81. And then I'm going to jump down here and switch this port to 8082 and the HTTPS port from 443 to 4432. I then save the file and then launch the Docker container by specifying the config file using the dash F option. And then the up command to bring up the server. And finally the dash D option to make it a daemon so it runs in the background. So basically I type sudo slash snap slash bin slash docker dash compose dash F dot slash docker dash compose dot YML up space dash D. This takes a little while to get things running, but once the server is up, I will check on the IP number of the server by using the IP command. I'm going to use the dash BR option for a brief output and then the object of ADR or address to give us the address. So IP space dash BR space A. And we see from here that our IP number for our network interface of ENP 0S3 is 192.168.1.164. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my browser and then go to the local host with the special port of 8082. After a second or so, we can see that we are connected to the Snapdrop server. As you can see the note in the middle of the screen that says open Snapdrop on other devices to send files. If we look at the bottom of the screen, we can see that this browser has the name of Amaranth Goat. The naming pattern of our Snapdrop server is some kind of color like Amaranth followed by an animal like goat. Now I'm going to go to another machine on my network. On my Mac here, I have typed the URL for our local Snapdrop server, which is 192.168.1.164 colon 8082. And I put that into the nav bar, and then we can see that we're connected to our local Snapdrop server as we have been assigned the name of Jade Macro. But if you notice, it does not see the other machine, Amaranth Goat. And Amaranth Goat does not see Jade Macro. So what's happening here? Well, this is because the way that Snapdrop is written, it is meant for a bunch of clients from the same local network to access the server on the internet. The assumption is that all these clients are behind the same router which performs a network address translation so that all the clients appear to the Snapdrop server as having the same IP. And then the Snapdrop server will put all the clients with the same IP in the same room so they can only see each other. In my case here, where I'm running a local server on a local network, all the clients will have different IPs. So by default, the Snapdrop server will not put them in the same room and they won't see each other, which is what we're seeing right now. So let's fix that by modifying the code a little bit. Using VI, I will modify the server slash index.js file. I'm going to be using the global substitution to look for all instances of the word peer.ip and then replace it with just a zero. So I'm going to do colon percent s slash peer.ip slash zero slash g. That did a bunch of substitutions. 
Then I'm going to do a global substitution and look for the instance of the word sender.ip and replace that with a zero. So colon percent s slash sender.ip slash zero slash g. And let that do all its substitutions. All right, so now I can go ahead and save that file. Now I will need to bring down the server and then bring it back up again so that the changes will take effect. So I'm going to do sudo slash snap slash bin slash docker dash compose down. Notice down here in the browser window in the back that we can see the connection to the snapjob server is lost. And we get this message that pops up every few seconds letting us know it can't connect to the server. And let's go ahead and bring it back up with sudo slash snap slash bin slash docker dash compose up dash d. So note that once the server is back up, those outage messages are gone. And within a few seconds, we see another machine pop up. And it's the Sapphire Stoat, which is from my Mac Safari browser. Now that I know things are working, I'm going to go to my iPhone's browser and also type in the URL. And then you see Jade Macro pop up. You may notice that the name of the instance of my Mac has changed from Jade Macro to Sapphire Stoat, and that the iPhone browser is now named Jade Macro. This may be slightly confusing, but just keep in mind that every time you tap into the Snapjob server, you may get a new name assigned. Let's bring more machines into the sharing party. I'm going to use my Windows machine and then in the Edge browser, I'm going to enter the URL of 192.168.1.164 colon 8082. And then once I'm connected to the Snapjob server, we can see that the Windows browser got assigned the name of Pink Quilia. And on the party line, we can see the Mac Safari the iPhone, the Ubuntu Firefox browser, and then Windows browser, Pink Quilia. Okay, let's demo transferring some files. I'm going to transfer a file from my Ubuntu machine to my Windows machine. So I click on Pink Quilia, and then a file browser window pops up. I find the file that I want to transfer, which is called .vim.info. I click open, and off it goes. And if I look at my Windows machine, I see that the pop-up panel that tells me a file was received with the name of .vim.info and the size of 2 kilobytes. And I can choose to ignore this file transfer request or I can save the file. Note that there is also a checkbox here to see if you want the program to ask to save each file before downloading. And the default is set to asking you every time. So I'm going to leave that alone. Once I click on save, it will be saved to the default downloads folder. And when it's done, I'm going to open that file just to take a look at it. Opening it up in Notepad, I see that the transfer was successful. Let's do another file transfer, this time from my Mac to my iPhone. I'm going to drag and drop a file from my Mac desktop to Jade Marmoset, which is my iPhone. And if we look at my iPhone, I get a pop-up panel alerting me to an incoming file, and I can choose to ignore or save that file. I'm going to save the file, and then my iPhone gives me the option to view or download. And I'm going to have it saved so that it's in the downloads folder under my files app. Let's do one last file transfer from my Windows machine to my Mac. I'm going to go ahead and click on Sapphire Stoat, which is my Mac, and then select the file I want to transfer. For a larger file, you can see that the status ring around the machine moving, and then it will tell you when the transfer is complete. So, as you can see, once we have the local server running, we can freely transfer files between Windows, Mac, Linux machines, and phones, all via drag and drop or just point and click. It's easy. Some viewers may have noticed some inconsistencies with the names of the machines. I notice this a lot with the iPhone, especially if I don't do anything on the phone for a few minutes and then it goes to sleep. And then every time I wake it up, 
it gets a new name from the Snapjob server because we have to do a reconnect. So as we can see here, my iPhone is currently named Jade Macro. But as I was connecting to my other machine, my iPhone went to sleep and dropped off. And when I woke it up, it reconnected to the server. It got renamed to Bush Clam. Then, as I was messing with it, it got renamed to Moccasin Ox. And then uh, the last example here, you can see it comes back as Jade Marmoset. It doesn't affect the functionality or anything, but it just keeps changing the name, so it may be confusing. But again, it's due to the phone going to sleep. If you have a machine that stays on, then the name stay and you won't have this issue. Snapjob is a great alternative to AirDrop when you have machines which are not part of the Apple ecosystem. And by setting up a local server, you can use this great tool without the internet. Because I work with Windows and Linux machines in addition to my Apple devices, this is a great way for me to easily share files between all my systems. And this works with physical machines and virtual machines. For more videos related to networking, see these videos here. Make sure you click on the blue monkey to subscribe. Thanks for your time and happy hunting.